Hey guys, welcome to the Animation Movies Recapped. This is David with you. In today's video, I will be going through a 2019 French computer animated adventure comedy film called Playmobil, the movie. I like the movie very much and hope you will like too. So without any further ado let's start with the recap. This story begins with Marla, an 18-year-old teenager who is excited about her new passport, which she does in hopes of traveling around the world and having new adventures. She is waiting for the return of her parents to tell them about her plans of quitting school to travel around the world. Charlie, her 10-year-old younger brother then comes in, informing her he is aware of her plans, and Pinky swears not to leak her plans. Out of excitement, she starts telling her brother about the adventures she will take with her passport through a song. They sing and play around the room. Later that night, while they are playing with some Viking toys, some policemen knock, only to tell them their parents died in a car accident on their way back home. Fast forward to four years later, Charlie comes back home with Marla, who appears to be a grown woman that has a job. The two argue over Marla behaving like an adult and losing her sense of adventure. Charlie wishes his sister could be more playful, while Marla wishes he could understand she is the breadwinner and has responsibilities unlike before. On hearing this, Charlie goes to his room and bangs his door severally to piss Marla off. Later on, as Marla was cleaning, she stumbles upon her old passport from years ago, and she remembers her dreams. Then she hears a thunderstorm, so she enters Charlie's room only to find out he ran away. Charlie is on a call with a friend he is supposed to have a sleepover with but changes his mind when he sees a toy factory door open. Angry at her brother, Marla tracks him with her phone using his phone location to the park and goes there. On getting to the toy factory, she meets a security guard who doesn't allow her in at first, until she explains her brother is in there and she wants to ground him for life. Then the security man gives her five minutes to get him because no one is allowed in there. She starts searching for him and when she finds him, Charlie shows her the placements of the toys in the factory and tells her that they are arranged almost like their home but better. Confused and pissed at Charlie, Marla scolds him and tries to take him home. Then he tells her that it must be fate that snatched all her thought of adventures and wishes of roaming around the world. She tells him that her wishes died along with the death of their parents and that she doesn't like adventures or having fun anymore. The two get into an argument that ends up with Marla throwing his toy on another toy. As this happens, the power in the toy factory goes off. Suddenly, a ray of light comes out from a mini lighthouse which starts sucking all the toys. Afraid, Marla tries to run away, but in an attempt to save his brother, they both are sucked along with all the toys. Hence, the pair land in a toy world and realize they are toys. Marla is a toy while Charlie is a toy viking. Still confused about their new bodies, they realize they are in the middle of an inevitable fight between two different tribes of Vikings. While the fight ensues, Charlie, just to save himself, unwillingly, fights off a whole team from his body, while unknowingly gaining attention from another group of Vikings, who think Charlie is a true Viking. As this is going on, we see three men hiding in a bush watching the Vikings fighting. They answer a call on a walkie-talkie that demands the strongest Viking. They inform the person they would do that. After the fight, a Viking from the winning team takes Charlie to a hill and starts praising him, and even crowns him the strongest warrior. On hearing this, Marla steps out and objects to his coronation saying they have to return home. Charlie refuses to follow her, which makes the rest of the Vikings ignore her, and they instead start a celebration party in honor of Charlie. All goes well until Charlie mistakenly steps on a piece of equipment that flings him far away to the area of the three weird men in the bushes. Marla immediately gets on a horse and follows Charlie, only to see him being stuffed into a horse carriage. She instantly follows the carriage until it gets to the express road, where she collides with a food truck and hijacks it from a hay truck driver in a desperate search for her brother. While following the carriage, the owner of the truck in a confused state keeps asking Marla to return his truck, but she refuses, saying she must get to her brother. While driving, Marla lost all the hay on the truck driver's vehicle while following the carriage. However, to her surprise, the vehicle carrying Charlie suddenly disappears into the thin air in the midst of the road. She gets out of the truck, confused about how it could disappear. While still in disbelief, the truck owner comes out and yells at Marla to never hijack his vehicle, or he would report her. He then drives off in a temperamental mind. Marla sights her horse from earlier on and tries to ride with it but it rebuffs and flings her off and runs away. During the process, a purse falls off the ground. Marla picks the purse which had two Viking gold in it. Although she was all alone and confused about her next line of action, she starts searching for her brother again and decides to walk to a nearby town. 
On getting there, she sees a group of locals who appear to be ranch people. There, she also bumps into the truck driver from earlier who is being accused by a resident because of selling fake hay that made his horse have wings. As the truck driver turns, he cites Marla and blames her for his business loss. He blames her for following him, but she denies it and informs him that she is here on her accord to raise a group to help search for her younger brother. Then she goes to the center of the village and tries to get their attention. But no one pays any attention to her until she brings out the Viking gold in her purse and offers it as payment for finding her brother. But as she does this, they all start to walk toward her. The truck driver then explains to her that she will be killed for the gold by the villagers. After hearing this, Marla begins to run because the villagers started chasing her with the intent to have the gold. However, the truck driver, to put his hands on the purse of gold, comes to rescue with his truck. While on the road, the truck driver introduces himself as Dell, a former food truck driver who turned his truck into his home. Then Marla introduces herself and tells him of her mission to find her brother. Dell tells her he could help her and informs her of his connections who can help her, but requests for some of her gold. Marla notices his interest in money and lies that she has 50 more gold coins so that Dell gets into helping her. Excitedly, Dell agrees and speeds up to his location but gets distracted by a group of animals crossing the road, so he turns his wheels quickly and ends up in an accident. Charlie, on the other hand, wakes up in a cage in a strange palace, where he is told he is going to fight side by side with the other captive warriors against a beast. A man comes out and introduces himself as the king. He informs Charlie and the other captives that they will compete in his competition to entertain his villagers. He tells them his champion never loses and tells them to prepare to die. Furthermore, he also informs them that they are on an island that no one knows of, so no one would come to save him. Marla, on the other hand, is waiting for Dell to fix the car when Dell's friend comes from behind the car and introduces himself as an undercover secret agent named Max Dasher. He takes them to his car where he briefs the two about some missing people who disappeared the exact way her brother did. He explains his plan to Dell and Marla, which is to infiltrate an agency and steal the street video coverage to find out where Charlie was taken. Marla disguised as an agent and sneaked into the agency. At the same time, Max sneaked into the electricity department of the agency to enable Marla to pass while Dell gets into making some free burritos for the real agent knowing that she has fondness for burritos. Then their plan of action is revealed which includes the burritos to be laced with a sleeping potion so that the agent can be knocked unconscious. But as Dell tries putting it, he mistakenly lures it on his face and sleeps instead. So as the real agent pops up, she eats burritos and heads into the agency. Meanwhile, Marla is almost done with retrieving the file, but the real agent arrives in time and catches her red-handed. She orders the soldiers to arrest her, but Max Dasher, who was disguised as a soldier, beats the other soldiers off and escapes with Marla. In the car, when Max Dasher was in deep sadness for not getting the video footage in hand, Marla reveals that she retrieved the video coverage. Just then, Max realizes they are being chased by the agency security, so in an attempt to stall them, he called his car with his spy watch and jumped out of the truck. He then immediately causes a road wrecking accident that enables Dell and Marla to drive out successfully. After this event, Max Dasher being the narcissistic man, starts to praise himself for concluding his mission so well. However, just when he gets off the car with style, two women suddenly come out from nowhere and start praising him for doing the mission so well. They even hand him a drink to make a toast which he accepts. On drinking it, he slumps after a sip and the women remove their masks. They turned out to be those men who kidnapped Charlie. They use their walkie-talkie device to communicate with the king and inform him they have captured Max Dasher. They then stuff him in their carriage and zoom off. At a fuel station, Marla is confused because she has gone through the video coverage severally but still can't understand how the vehicle could have disappeared just like that. While Dell is eating a bowl of meatballs, he calls Marla to join him so she won't die of starvation. Marla, feeling bad that she cannot protect her brother, reluctantly agrees to eat. After a few bites, she advises Dell to cook for a living, and he informs her he would consider it. As they proceed to leave the station, Marla is watching the coverage one more time, but this time around, Dell recognizes a logo on a piece of equipment on the vehicle. He tells Marla he can easily take her to the owner of the company that has the logo, so they drive there. Meanwhile, Charlie is at an underground prison with some other high-end warriors, 
who discuss an escape plan that would be attainable if they worked as a team, so they agree. Moving on, Marla and Del got to their destination and head in. Then Del briefs Marla that the owner of the club they are in is a woman called Glenara, who owns all high-tech illegal equipment in the country. He tells her Glenara should know where Charlie is since his kidnappers used her equipment. While on their way up to meet her, a robot is thrown out of the top room, so Marla helps it back to its feet and the robot seems to develop instant feelings for Marla. But Glenara then yells for the robot. So, the robot runs to meet her quickly. On getting to her room, Del is threatened by Glenara for owing her money, but he shows her some Viking coins. Then Glenara starts to sulk over the coin out of excitement, so Del sees the moment to ask her about the equipment in the video she explains to them that it was purchased by her notable customer, a king in a faraway land, and she tells them Charlie is probably in a contest where he will have to fight for his life tomorrow morning. Glenara then demands more money, so Del asks Marla for more coins. Having no choice, Marla confesses to only having two coins and apologizes for lying to Del. But Del felt betrayed, Glenara then captured the pair. On another note, the prisoner warriors break out of jail and head to one of the pirate's ships, who are one of them. But as he proceeds to get on the ship, their fellow warrior mistakenly hits the pirate, and he ends up fainting, so Charlie decides to fly the ship out of town but unfortunately, they got caught by the king's men. Subsequently, Glenara ties Del and Marla over her high-tech transport machine. So, she sets the machine to a hot lava volcano and releases them into it. But as she releases them into it, her assistant the robot saves them and hacks the system of the device and takes them all to another town. When they all landed in the town, Del and Marla got into an argument about the lies she told him, and Del decided to go on his path because he couldn't trust her anymore. So, Marla and the robot went their own way. Following this, the warriors are all caught and apprehended by the king. They are being stoned with rotten foods for attempting to escape their cages. Due to this, Charlie had a rethink and regrets joining the Vikings in the celebration and not going home with Marla. He tells his mates he misses his sister and he expressed how he wanted her to be okay. Then Max Dasher is brought in and chained as well. But Max recognizes all the warriors as the missing people he had been trying to find. He tells them he is a top spy and even informs Charlie that his sister has traveled far and wide and is coming for him. He tells Charlie that Marla worked with him to find them. After hearing this, Charlie gets encouraged and breaks out of the chains. They all start running out of the town square while being chased by the king's guards until Charlie opens an underground hole for all to jump in. When they did, he closed it and tells them he will come, but he needs to stall the guards. While fighting the guards, Charlie becomes outnumbered, so he gives up and is taken back to prison. Marla, on the other hand, feeling hopeless and tired in the forest, sees her passport in disappointment until she hears a voice that scares her. It turns out to be a fairy godmother who grants each person one wish. She tells Marla she spoke to Del not too long ago and gave him a wish. Then she asked Marla what she wanted. Marla tells her she wishes for her brother to be saved and brought back to her. The fairy laughed, explaining her wishes don't work that way, just like Cinderella that still had to go to the ball with the prince. So, she starts singing to Marla, explaining that she will help her be who she used to be. She takes her to a beautiful land filled with nice and good people. She sings to her that she can be the girl she used to be, shows her the passport she had dreams with, and tells her she can do whatever she wants to. Then shows her where Charlie is held and gives her an armor she made for her. Marla, filled with so much positivity in life, agreed to go get Charlie, so the fairy put her on a magic rug, and she went with the robot to get him. On getting there, she infiltrated the town and sneaked into the palace without getting caught. Although this happened, Charlie is released into the open battle to fight with the champion, a dragon who never lost a fight. As the match begins, a warrior kicks the kings and flies into the battleground to join the match. Charlie is confused about whom the warrior is and if it wants to kill him, only for the warrior to break his chains off and reveal herself as his sister. They both work hand in hand to avoid getting killed by the dragon, until Del crashed the fight with his truck and saves the both of them. Marla then comes up with an idea and tells Charlie to throw her in the dragon's direction. He does this, and she throws some of Del's hay into its mouth. On doing this, the dragon instantly grew pink wings and became gentle. The king, a childish and self-loathing man, tries ordering his guards to seize the prisoners, but turns to see the warriors which he captured behind him. So, they seize him and throw him in a cell. The warriors cheer Charlie on from the throne and the crowd goes wild after the turn of events because they never liked their ruler, so they are satisfied with him being captured. Del on seeing the crowd's multitude resolves to sell food in the arena, while Marla breaks the dragon's chains off, telling it to be free and that it belongs to no one. 
On doing this, Charlie and Marla hug their new friends and bid them farewell. Then they climb the dragon, heading for the lighthouse. The pair opens their eyes to see themselves as human beings once again. Then they hug each other and apologize, and the power in the factory is returned. Just then, the security man joins them and tells them they would have to leave since she has found her brother. He tells her that the five minutes just got exhausted and that Marla and Charlie are confused because they realize they only spent five minutes here while they had an adventure in the toy world. Then the security calls her and gives her a passport she left on the floor. She opens it and sees a logo for each place in the toy world, and they resolve to have more adventures together. If you love this video, please leave a like and subscribe.